Hello, I'm Konstantinos Gavril and I have the pleasure of presenting, along with my co-author, Ruslan Gusainov, our work on computational design of cold bent glass facades. Our motivation is to enable a new technology for designing glass facades that are manufactured in an economic way. Cold bending of glass is a relatively recent method to achieve double curved shapes with glass panels. It is based on the fact that glass can safely withstand certain mechanical deformations. Starting with an initially flat glass panel, we can bend it elastically to a pre-manufactured curved frame. However, the design space of such shapes is non-trivially constrained. Our aim is to enable interactive design for this fabrication method. Traditionally, free-from glass facades, such as this example, are fabricated using hot bending. This process is costly and labor-intensive. Fabrication of each panel requires heating glass in a special oven to make it moldable. Then the panel is bent into shape and retains its curved state after cooling. Some of the disadvantages of the method are the high cost and energy requirements, along with the material waste due to the need of building numerous unique molds. Glass is a brittle material and its mechanical properties make design exploration of cold bent glass panels challenging. Another challenge is that for a given target boundary, computing the cold bent glass panel, conforming to that boundary, is an inverse design problem, since the rest shape of the panel is a priori unknown. This is usually a computationally expensive process which prohibits interactive form finding during the design process. Before describing how these challenges are addressed in our method, let us go over related work. Our method is inspired by a set of related works on interactive design and shape optimization. Specifically, works on stress minimization in structures, such as shell-like deployable structures by Panetta et al. Eigensatz et al. provided a global optimization method for efficient and low-cost rationalization of an architectural design. In this work, the constraints are purely geometric and do not include complex shapes and material properties that are essential for cold bent glass. Berk and Giles explored the capabilities of cold bent glass for architecture, studying simple deformation modes. Interactive design space navigation has also received a lot of attention, as in Schulz et al. However, their approach is based on interpolation in a small neighborhood and would require very dense sampling of the parameter domain with more than 10 degrees of freedom. Moreover, as we will see later, the interpolation has to be able to handle multimodality. To address the challenges of designing with cold bent glass, we present our interactive design tool. In our workflow, the designer manipulates a quad mesh representing the panelization. To get immediate feedback on the shape and fabricability of the panels following this layout, we utilize a predictor which we trained on a large database of physical simulation results. The design can be optimized for certain properties like fabricability and aesthetics. And finally, our method outputs curved frames and flat panel shapes to be used in construction. Now Ruslan will move on with the details of our method. Thank you, Konstantinos. Let us first focus on the geometry representation of panels. We start with a quad mesh representing the facade and associate each face with a bicubic Bezier surface approximating the geometry of the cold bank glass. We opt for a CAD representation since it is familiar to the designers. It is also low parametric, which is beneficial for training the predictor. We constrain the control points of the Bezier surfaces so that they represent shapes reasonable for glass panels. Know that the boundary control points parameterize the curved edges of the panel and the four internal control points define the surface they enclose. We start by looking at a single edge. We associate it with a planar cubic hermit curve with minimum strain energy. Given endpoint locations and tangents, we use Young and Chan's approach to compute the inner control points that are the minimizers of this energy. Four of such edges represent the complete boundary of a panel. The remaining control points are computed in such a way that the Bezier surface closely approximates the simulated surface. Let us now discuss our simulation and shape optimization method. The simulation is based on the classical shell theory, where a glass panel is represented by a normally extruded mid-surface. In particular, we use the model by Gingold et al. with the mid-surface discretized by triangles. In this model, under linearity assumptions, the green strain tensor is decomposed into in-plane and bending components. Here, E bar is the membrane strain and E hat is the shape operator. Using an improved version of the discrete shape operator, as in Weichedel, we obtain smooth stress distributions. We refer to the original papers for the details. For given boundary conditions and undeformed panel, forward simulation is in essence minimization of the total elastic energy with respect to the deformed shape. 
However, in practical fabrication it is very difficult to apply tangential forces to the boundary of the panels, and we aim to minimize such forces. This can be achieved by minimizing the total elastic energy while both deformed and undeformed shapes are variable. A panel optimized in this scenario will be referred to as a minimal energy panel or a panel conforming to its boundary. As mentioned earlier, it is a computationally costly routine, and we use it only to collect data for training and to generate the undeformed panel shapes for a final facade design. To evaluate the breakability of a panel, we follow Rankine's theory assuming that the failure occurs when the maximal principal stress exceeds the threshold for glass. Instead of taking the global maximal value, we follow a Kahneman approach of taking an LP norm across the triangles choosing a high value of P. This approximation is smooth with respect to the panel boundary and facilitates continuous optimization. In practice, we set P equal 12. A crucial observation at this point is that the solutions are not necessarily unique for a given boundary. In this figure, for example, two alternative stable states have very different Gauss maps and almost orthogonal bending directions. We would like to be able to predict both of them for design purposes. However, here only one of them is obtained as a solution depending on the initialization, and it is hard to guess an initialization leading to an alternative solution. To recap, using our shape optimization routine, we can sample panel boundaries and obtain panel geometries conforming to them along with corresponding LP stress values. These outputs are used to train our data-driven model. And now Constantinos will move on with its description. Thank you, Ruslan. To accurately capture the design space of cold bent glass panels, we need to allow our data-driven model to explicitly handle multiple shapes. To this end, we use a mixture density network, which is a multimodal regression model. The architecture is shown here. The input is a panel boundary P, which is propagated through six dense layers, each with 512 exponential linear units. Residual connections and layer normalization are used at each hidden layer. The final layer outputs two Gaussian distributions, each with its own mean zeta and variance xi. Each Gaussian is weighted by a probability coefficient pi. Each of the two Gaussian means contains the interior control points and maximal stress of the panel. In short, for an input boundary, the output of the model is two panels, each with its shape S and stress sigma, weighted by a probability coefficient. In this particular case, the panel on the right has a very low level of confidence and is discarded. We train the model on more than a million simulated panels. The training takes around 20 hours on an NVIDIA Titan X. As a data enrichment process, the trained model was then used to identify boundaries in the database that output two alternative predictions both with high confidence, where one of them did not correspond to an entry in the database. Initializing our simulation procedure with these predictions resulted in the discovery of new minimal energy panels for that given boundary. These were then added to the database and used to retrain the regressor, further increasing the accuracy of the model. To actually achieve interactive design optimization of such panelizations, we aim to maximize a collection of desired properties in the final design each formulated as a weighted energy functional. The main drivers for this optimization are the fabricability of the design using cold bending, that is increase the number of cold bend panels in the final design, and facade smoothness, which we will discuss in more detail. Other properties include mesh fairness and reference proximity, which are standard in geometry processing, as well as some constraints that are derived from the expected input of the neural network. These are competing properties, so we are not interested in a unique solution. Instead, since the desired output may vary depending on the designer's intention, the weights can be manually adjusted to balance the trade-off between properties and to allow exploration of various results. More specifically, design optimization is formulated as an unconstrained nonlinear least squares problem, and we use the standard Gauss-Newton method to find the local minimum. Arguably, the most important property in our setting is the manufacturability of the final design. Glass failure occurs when the maximal stress of the panel exceeds the strength of the material, so we wish to keep the maximal stresses below that limit. This threshold value depends on the type of glass and the safety factor. We set it to 65 MPa. Consider this initial panelization of the NHHQ building by Zaha Hadid Architects. In red are the panels that have stress prediction that exceeds 65 MPa. Optimizing the design drops the number of breaking panels from 1500 to around 900 
which amounts to roughly 40% reduction in the number of panels that would otherwise need to be hot bent. This figure shows the same design under the scope of smoothness. We optimize for smooth connections between panels sharing an edge, and smoothness of the curve network. After optimization, we observe a significant drop in maximum and mean kink angles. This leads to higher visual quality of the final design, as you can see from the reflections in this render detail of the previous panelization. Let us briefly see how the final result is influenced by the weight choice. We use an initial panelization of the Lilium Tower by Zaha Hadid Architects for this example. Optimizing this design for only stress and proximity leads to a considerable reduction in the number of breaking panels, but to an unsmooth and unsuitable mesh. Alternatively, optimizing for stress and fairness while lowering the proximity importance leads to a much smoother design that deviates from the original input. For validation, we examine separately the simulation method, the prediction accuracy of the data-driven model, and the capabilities of cold band glass in small prototype scale. Here is a photo of the scaled prototype model that we built as a more qualitative experiment and as a proof of concept. The design was achieved with the interactive tool and the rest shapes were computed with our shape optimization routine. Let us briefly go through the fabrication process. For this model, we use borosilicate thin glass. A rough stress test shows the bending capabilities for this kind of glass. Naturally, for the prototype model, we will not push the glass close to its breaking point and stay within reasonable safe limits. The glass, cushioned by tape, was pressed down to the frame by L-shaped stainless steel fixtures, spot welded to the frame. The individual frames were then joined together to form an individual small-scale facade. The expected stress values range from 20 to 62 MPa. After the assembly process, the 3x3 panelization is mounted on a simple base. This is the final fabricated double-curved facade. Moreover, we performed experimental validation of the simulation to measure the accuracy of our approach. To this end, a high-precision frame was machined from cast aluminum and the same glass type with the prototype was held in position with cushioned stainless steel finger springs. Scanning and comparing with the simulation results shows great agreement. The maximum deviation value of 0.12 mm is reached in small areas and is still quite smaller than the thickness of the glass. To validate the accuracy of the model, we retain a test set of 10,000 panels from the database. The shape prediction has mean absolute error of half the panel thickness for manufacturable panels. Stress prediction for the critical region of 50 to 65 MPa has mean absolute error of 2.9 MPa, which is acceptable for our application. We will dedicate this part to go through some of the designs we achieved with our method. Let us begin with an interesting facade design to compare the visual quality of a cold band glass panelization on the right to a planar quad mesh that follows the principal curvature network on the left. It was shown by Pelis et al. that such a PQ mesh is visually the smoothest possible with planar quads. From the detail in the zebra patterns, you can see how the cold band glass panelization increases the visual smoothness while preserving the underlying mesh layout. Let us now examine this relatively simple but representative design. The initial panelization outputs braking panels in challenging areas of both positive and negative curvature. Optimizing produces a design that has no braking panels and thus can be realized exclusively with cold band glass. Here is a render of the end result. Let us continue with renders of other designs that we considered during this presentation. The optimized NHHQ building, notice again the reflections, and the same for the Lilium Tower. Here we can see a sped up video captured from an interactive design session. The designer in this case manipulates a panelization with the use of control handles and the Catmull Clark subdivided mesh. They get immediate feedback on the shape and stress of the individual panels. Prediction time is approximately 0.1 seconds per 1000 panels. Panels are colored according to their stress value and whether they are inside the network input domain. The optimization time for feasibility and smoothness is 3 seconds per iteration. We needed 10 to 20 iterations for all the examples shown in the presentation. To summarize, we presented a method for the interactive design of freeform surfaces composed of cold band glass panels. The method involved setting up an appropriate geometry for our task, solving the inverse design problem for cold band glass panels that conform to a given boundary, and training a multimodal regression model to quickly predict their shapes and stresses. We then incorporated the model to an interactive design tool, 
and further utilize it to optimize the design for fabricability and smoothness. As immediate future work, we see the improvement of our sampling strategy to guarantee that all stable states have been identified. We would also like to see this method applied to materials different from glass and incorporate advanced architectural simulation needs like wind load and temperature. We conclude this presentation with a render of the final result from the interactive design session we saw two slides before. Thank you for your attention.